Hi, welcome to TalksOnWeb.com. Today I'll create a simple tooltip using plain old JavaScript and not jQuery. Uh, the purpose of this exercise is to learn JavaScript. Uh, a lot of times you see in the industry that people know jQuery, they're using copy and paste, but they don't know what the code is behind that plugin. So if they ever need to change it, they're kind of scared and completely clueless on how to do that. So. Without any further ado, let me show you a simple example of what we'll have created by the end of this exercise. I hover over this hyperlink and I get a tooltip. I move away, it's gone. So, pretty simple. Now let's go to our code. And for our CSS, this is the only class that we're going to need. For our JS, here's the code that we're going to be using. It's pretty simple actually. Here's a tooltip object we're going to create. It's going to have three functions inside of it as you can see and then here's our HTML code so as you can see I've included the JS file and the CSS file as far as the HTML code goes inside the body I've created hyperlinks and each one of these hyperlinks has a title attribute so whatever value we have in the title attribute is the one we're gonna see in the tooltip so let's get started with our JavaScript code the first thing I did was create a tooltip object and it's actually an object literal so if you don't know what this is I'm gonna be creating another tutorial about object literals you can view that and just get a real quick idea of what that is you can view that on talksonweb.com and um, inside of this object literal I've created the function init the first thing it does is it gets all the links the way we do that is by the document object model by saying document dot get elements by tag name and the element we want to get is the hyperlink so it gets all the hyperlinks on the page stores them in this variable we check if there are any found on the page and start looping through them and as we're looping through them I make sure that each link at least has, at least has a title worth showing so if it's blank we're not going to show a blank tooltip it doesn't make sense that way so for each link we do something different this time we add an event listener for those of you not familiar with an add event listener here's a simple uh, example of why you should have it now most people in the street would not see something like this they wouldn't do that because this is inline CSS we would put something like this in the CSS file the same thing goes with JavaScript a lot of people are moving away from this so if you want to do an if you want to add let's say this function say hello to this element on the click event you would use this method called add event listener so we're gonna say for this particular element what I want you to do is if somebody mouses over this hyperlink I want you to call this function show tip which is within this tooltip object and now add event listener is added so that's the whole point of this method. The same thing is done right below it. For the same link I'm saying that if somebody mouses out of the link or mouses away from it, I want you to call a high tip function, which is again within the same tooltip object. So all of our tooltip code is within one object. Okay? And this is pretty much our init function. It looks for all the hyperlinks, adds an event listener to it saying that if somebody moves moves their mouse over a link call this function and if they move away call this function that's in it the next one is show tip which is going to show the tooltip so the logic of our code is pretty much this right here when somebody mouses over a hyperlink we're going to create a span element place it between the hyperlink and add some CSS properties that we're going to view in a minute which will make that box float below the hyperlink giving you that tooltip like appearance and that's all there is to the jQuery or any other JavaScript framework tooltips you're using they might add some more facilities to it Ajax or some CSS properties but the logic's pretty much the same so what we're gonna do first is use the document object model say document dot create element span so at runtime we create an element span store it in this variable span element and then we say give it the class name tooltip which we've defined in our CSS we're gonna look at this in a minute okay so for now we create a span element 
okay and we store it and we give it the class name tool tip and then we say for this element span inside of that span element what I want you to do is place some text now you might wonder what this event is this event anytime somebody mouses over a hyperlink an event is fired meaning that the browser realizes something's happening the user's trying to do something I need to react to it what they do is they give you an event object all this event object does is it tells you more information about what just happened like which hyperlink the user just hovered over so if you look at this event is utilized down here we say event dot target which hyperlink did he hover over then we say give us the title attribute the value inside of its title attribute and get us this value and then we put it inside of the span element so if you remember we create a span element which is the orange box and the value you see inside of it has been retrieved by the title attribute of the hyperlink let's go back so that's what we've done with these three lines of code the next thing we're going to do is say for this hyperlink this user just hovered over make his title value title attribute blank reason being if you don't do this and try to block this one line of code out and see what happens when you don't do this you'll see two tooltips one is the tooltip you created and the other one is the default one the browser gives you because it sees a title attribute value the next thing we're going to do is for the same hyperlink that we've accessed to the event object we're going to say take the span element we've created now we haven't done anything with it yet take the span element and I want you to append it to the hyperlink see the syntax all this is doing is taking that span element and placing it between those hyperlinks the next thing is this line I don't expect you to understand right away what I did was I went back to the hyperlink and I gave it a private variable uh, private variable just for the sake of argument let's say this is a private variable and then I store a reference to the span element I created now why is this helpful you'll find out in a minute so with show tool to show tip we created a span element gave it a class and then we added it inside of the hyperlink that was just called next when high tips when the user moves away from the hyperlink what we do is we say here's a hyperlink that the user just moved away from and we repopulate its title attribute remember in this part we made it blank so the default tooltip won't show up now we're going to put that back for future you for you know for future reuse now here's a hyperlink that we want but how do we get to this span elements in our HTML value so we can repopulate the title that's where this particular line came in handy we stored a reference to the span element so all we have to do is to say go to that target hi hyperlink and here's a reference that this guy stored get its inner HTML value and now you have your title attribute value back next line we're gonna say here's a hyperlink and we're gonna say remove child meaning remove the element the span element that we stored the reference to and that's the three functions inside of it the first one you get all the hyperlinks assign event listeners to them this one we create an element create the tooltip via CSS and the last one we remove that element so the tooltip just moves away now here is our object but how are we calling this object that's the last line we say here's a window object and then we call the add event listener again we're going to attach a function an event via the JS code we're saying that as soon as the whole window loads I want you to call the function in it which is in the object tooltip so this whole code starts calling itself one by one and that's the JS code now the CS is simple CS is only one op CS is pretty much actually two classes uh, Oops. the CSS tooltip what I did was uh, let me go to this part right here first I made the position absolute 
because we're gonna move that tooltip around we're not gonna store it exactly where it was we need to move it away so the next thing I did was make the Z index value 1 this is not that important uh, the top what I did was I give it 30 pixels so when I hover over a hyperlink this box is 30 pixels below the hyperlink and it's from the left it's 20 pixels okay and then the width of course is pretty much obvious but the key point is this position absolute if you leave it as it was which is you know the default it won't move the box away because it's actually static at that point so you have to give it this value the other CSS properties that you've been given is just for styling I mean I gave it the border the background the font color even made it bold uh, the padding and made the corners round by using this radius border radius property uh, one last thing that you'll have to set the very last thing is for all hyperlinks you need to make sure the position is relative because this needs to bounce out of that relative zone so this is pretty much how you create a simple looking tooltip and if now you look at any jQuery code hopefully you'll get the logic behind what that guy is doing and you won't be completely lost hopefully this was helpful to you if it wasn't please give me some feedback I would love to change it uh, for more information on uh, JavaScript please go to talksomad.com. Thank you.